안녕하십니까 김경원. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim j o n g w o n Today I'm going to look at different lesions within sinus in terms of pathology and diagnosis. As mentioned, there are many different lesions within sinus. I talked about sinusitis in the previous lecture, and today I'm going to talk about mucosal thickening and mucus retention cysts and other different lesions. I'm going to talk about the clinical cases that I've done and explain how it is shown on a panoramic image and CT. Healthy sinus membrane is a respiratory membrane which is about one millimeter thick and is not seen on the radiographic images. However, with inflammation, the thickness of mucous membrane can increase by 10 to 15 folds and if the membrane thickness increases, it can have inflammation below and it can be diagnosed as mucositis. If the thickness is over 3 mm, on radiographic image, a thickened mucous membrane mostly appears to be a radiopaque strip in parallel with the bone housing. A thickened sinus membrane can be caused by the root apex inflammation of posterior maxillary teeth. Mucosal thickening could be caused by teeth. In other words, if the tooth is removed, the mucosal thickening can be improved. In the sinus floor, there is mucosal thickening on CT. In the maxillary posterior area, there is apex lesion and there is mucosal thickening. Let's look at panoramic image. In the upper left posterior area, there was bridge. In number 7, on the apex side, there's lesion. On the x-ray, there's significant mucosal thickening, almost in the form of dome shape. In the second x-ray, the patient did not receive any dental treatment, but number 27 was dislodged naturally. The bridge prosthesis failed, and on the left, compared with the panoramic image on the left, the mucosal thickening has improved. After tooth extraction, in the panoramic image, in the sinus floor, mucosal thickening can be observed. In the case of this patient, three implants were placed, a sinus graft was done. After one year, five months later, six months later, the overall condition on the panoramic image, there is barely any mucosal thickening. In the posterior right side, if you take a CT, on top of bone graft, there is a little bit of mucosal thickening left, but you can see that it has improved compared with before surgery. In the case of the left side, I'm not sure whether you remember the x-ray before, but after loss of tooth, the Sinus mucosal thickening on the right side has improved as well. Next, I'm going to talk about mucus retention cyst. Mucus retention cyst is known as retention pseudocyst. 
This occurs due to an edema caused by the mucus accumulated by the obstruction of the mucus gland duct of the paranasal sinus or cystic changes of the inflammatory thickened mucus membranes. The overall mucus membrane is thickened. Cystic changes can occur. This is a pseudocyst, and it is without epithelium. It is retained within the mucus. It is a pseudocyst. Let's look at radiographic findings. It can be observed in panoramic radiographic images. It occurs either unilaterally or bilaterally, and sometimes there can be multiple cysts. Slight radiopaque dome shape on radiographs can be observed. The mucus retention cyst does not affect adjacent anatomical structures. In the panoramic radiograph, in the upper right posterior area, dome shaped lesion can be observed on CT. On the sinus floor, it is quite clear there is a dome shaped cyst. This is mucus retention cyst. Mucus retention cyst mostly takes a round dome shape and it is usually filled with mucus. It is located in maxillary sinus floor. Some people ask whether surgery can be done even with a retention cyst. In general, within sinus cavity, as mentioned earlier, if the maxillary ostium is functioning and is not blocked, this is not a contraindication for doing sinus surgery. If mucosal retention cyst is very large, and if it is not blocking ostium, you can do bone graft as well. In the case that I've shown you, I've placed a three implants and did bone graft. After that, the dome shape is still remaining. On the left side, this is before surgery. As shown, there is dome shape mucus retention cyst. On the right, this is Combeam CT. Implant has been placed. Implant have been placed. Bone graft is done. On top of it, there is still a bit of cyst left. If possible, I'm going to show you a surgical clip of doing surgery in relation with mucosal retention cyst. Next, I'm going to talk about polyp. This is not easily observed on a panoramic x-ray. This is a lesion that protrudes from maxillary sinus membrane and it is usually located in sinus floor. Let's look at this patient. The patient came to my hospital because in number 13, K9, if you look at the root area, there is a radiolucent lesion. It's a cystic lesion. There's something circular. When the patient was referred to me, there was no clinical symptom. And number 13, the canine tooth itself, the vitality was intact. The private dental clinic was confused as to do endodontic treatment or to perform other kind of treatment. I took CT on CT. The sinus looks clean and there is something in the form of polyp. CT was not taken just because of polyp, but in number 13. On the apex side, there is like a cyst like a lesion. There is a radiolucency here. In order to evaluate this, a CT was taken and polyp was observed. 
Polyp was observed. I reviewed the CT. On CT, you can see it's unrelated with the canine. It's palatal to the canine root, and there's round lesion. It's connected with sinus cavity. It's a unique form of maxillary sinus. It's difficult to say it's septum on panoramic image. It looked like a cyst. In panoramic image, you cannot make diagnosis, but using CT, you can see polyp-like lesion. Next, I'm going to talk about antrolith. In the case of antrolith, Antrolith is caused by the calcification of foreign body within the maxillary sinus or stagnant mucus. It appears as smooth or irregular radio-opaque masses on radiographic images. This is panoramic x-ray. A patient was referred to me from a private dental clinic. Within the sinus, uh, there was increased radio opacity and the shape looks irregular. The dentist didn't know what this was and referred the patient to me. Before the patient was referred to me at the private dental clinic, Negative explanation was provided to the patient in regards to this lesion. The patient was very worried, especially so because the patient's father died of oral cancer a couple of years ago. The patient had phobia towards cancer, and there's apical lesion was observed in the sinus. And adding to that, the explanation from the private dental clinic caused the patient to worry extremely. I took a CT. The mucosal thickening or the sinus itself looks healthy. The air is filled here. There's radio opacity in the sinus floor side, and there's some sort of irregular dome-shaped mass. In axial view, it looks quite irregular. In general, when antrolith is observed, I always say you don't need to do surgery immediately, but as mentioned, the patient had a lot of fear because the patient's father died of oral cancer. The patient had phobia towards cancer. The patient really wanted surgery despite the explanation that this was not necessary immediately. Surgery was done to remove antrolith. After that, panoramic x-ray was taken. You can see that the lesion has disappeared. This was the only case I removed the entrolith within the sinus. When patients come in with entrolith, I always say we need to wait and see. I explain that surgery is not mandatory in this case. As for this patient, the patient really wanted surgery, and that's why it was removed. Next is fungal infection. This occurs very rarely within sinus. At times, fungal infection can occur. In those cases, we call this aspergillosis. The fungal infection is caused by fungus. Irregular masses can be observed. It is not healed easily. You need to work with ENT or infectious disease specialist in treating this. Surgery may be needed. You need to look the, with a CT scan, you need to do biopsy to check whether the fungus infection has been cured. You need to prescribe antifungal agent long term. This is not something you see frequently. Next, I'm going to talk about malignant tumor in maxillary sinus. This is not frequent. You don't come across these cases frequently. This is the patient. The patient was in a lot of pain. 
On the upper left side, the face itself was quite swollen and the patient was e complaining of extreme pain. When I took a panoramic x-ray and water view, on the upper left side, it's a bit bulging and the border line with the nasal cavity is hazy. Something is quite filled up within the sinus and in plain film it is now interfering into the nasal cavity when i took a ct within the sinus there was a huge mess and maxilla itself was destroyed the nasal cavity is involved and orbital flow it is impacted by it after biopsy, it turned out to be malignant tumor. You don't come across these cases very frequently. In this case, you need to do surgery and relevant treatment. Next, I'm going to talk about a cyst in maxillary sinus. It's not really frequent, but at times you come across these cases. I'm going to show you some of the cases. This is a 18-year-old young male patient from private dental clinic. The patient was referred. In number 15, there was pain and apical lesion existed. Extraction was done. After extraction, the socket did not heal. Oroenteral fistula was formed. Drainage was observed cystic fluid continued to come out so the private dental clinic referred the patient to ENT from ENT perspective it looked weird and the patient was ultimately referred to me in the panoramic image on the right sinus of the sinus there's a haziness and overall the condition of sinus looks different unlike sinusitis i took water's view the right side of sinus there's a round bone-like mass there's radiopacity there's patency with oral cavity so there's air observed in the plain film i took a ct there's oroenteral fistula, and there's patency with oral cavity, and within it, there's cystic cavity as well as lining. Around that bone is formed. Due to lesion related to tooth, there's radicular cyst, which has persisted for a long time. Inflammation has persisted as a response bone has been formed. Radicular cyst originating from tooth is observed within sinus cavity. The sinus itself is clean. There's no resistance because it is filled with air. Radicular cyst becomes bigger and the lesion continues for a long time because the patient is young. As a response to that, bone is formed. Cystic cavity exists within sinus at the time of surgery. Lateral approach was done to remove the cyst. On the lateral side, there is no bone, but this is a young patient. Therefore, I just did closure. We can do bone graft later if necessary. This was how the surgery was done. This is post-op image after surgery. You can see that oroenteral fistula is gone. From water's view, this is immediate post-op. There's a little bit of blood and a bit of air fluid within sinus. The cyst was quite rare. It wasn't a lesion, but it's somewhat of a radicular cyst originating from tooth. Next, I'm going to talk about dentigerous cyst. If you look at the panoramic image, in white dotted line, there's cystic cavity. There's impacted with some tooth. It is deviated this way. 
Number eight, which was impacted, caused dentigerous cyst within the sinus. CT was taken. This is similar to the case before. Within the sinus, there is an independent cystic cavity. The patient did not experience any symptom. In the maxillary tuberosity side, the bone has been destroyed. You can see that this is not an independent lesion within the sinus. Cystic lesion within the sinus is observed on CT. If you look at the coronal view or axial view, there is an independent cyst. And within that, you can see tooth exist. It's a dentigerous cyst. This is a CT scan, and you can see the lesion here. Following the previous lecture, I've talked about different pathology and diagnosis related to maxillary sinus. The most problematic of all is acute and chronic sinusitis. So, at times, you can come across mucosal thickening, mucus retention cyst, and other cystic lesions. I've shown you clinical images as well as sinus lesions, which require CT taken as well as panoramic image for accurate diagnosis. You will not come across these cases very frequently, but if you make accurate diagnosis of these sinus lesions, you'll be able to come up with a better implanted treatment plan and do implanted treatment in a successful manner. Over the past two hours, I've talked about lesions within sinus. I've talked about x-ray images in relation to this. In providing implanted treatment, especially in the upper posterior area, you need to have accurate diagnosis of sinus. You need to use panoramic image as well as CT to do that. If you use this to come up with a surgical plan, you'll be able to perform implanted treatment in a successful way. Thank you for watching.